Never a borrower or lender be. And those are wise words. Recently, somebody asked me for money. They needed a loan. And they needed a loan, it was for five figures. And I said no. Uh, this person, it doesn't matter this person, but I've had experience with lending money. And it usually ends badly. In my own experience, it ended badly. In other pe people's experience, it's ended badly. All kinds of trouble ensue when you lend money. And I'm gonna talk about that because uh, basically the lesson I want you to take from this video is do not lend money. Do not borrow money because it always ends badly. Maybe with a bank when it's very structured and very organized, yeah, it might work out with a mortgage, say, or something like that. Maybe it'll work out. But for the most part, when you are borrowing or lending money between acquaintances or friends or close friends or family members, it always ends badly. No exception. Let me explain a story that happened to me um, hey, this is just a miserable story. Okay, th this is what happened. Back in 2003, I believe, I was approached by a man named Peter. Okay, that's what I'm gonna call him. That's not his actual name, but it'll do for this video. His name is Peter, and he was a cousin of my mother's. His mother was the younger sister of my grandmother. Now, Peter was just about five years older than me because he had been, you know, the, the youngest child of his mother and so forth. And he was only about five years, six years older than me, something like that. And he approached me and he needed money. He needed uh, the equivalent of $20,000. And it was very urgent and very important, and he explained why. He had gotten into a business deal, and he had used his mother's apartment as collateral, and, you know, the business venture had gone tits up, and he needed cash to cover this, this loan, or else his mother's apartment was going to go into foreclosure. Yeah, I mean, you, you, all, you can already tell if the guy had to use his mother's apartment as collateral for this deal, you know that, you know, it, the, the story is only going to go south from here, right? Yeah. So he had gone into this deal, you know, things went tits up. He needed 20000 to cover this loan. And he told me that he could repay me in six months. Okay, this guy is my mom's cousin. I see him all the time in family gatherings and shit like that, right? I mean, it, it, it's not like some random stranger. He's not going to go anywhere, okay? I mean, he, he's, he's here in my social milieu. He's, he's not going to just vanish, right? <laughs> uh, he's not going to fucking vanish. He's always going to be my mother's cousin, and my aunt is still alive. I know where she lives, right? So this should not be such a problem. I lent him the money. I lent him the money and he said they'd pay me back in six months and so sure, fine, no problem. I didn't have much of a problem with lending him the money because he was so clearly relieved, okay? And I thought to myself, well, you know, that's what money's for. Money is to fix problems. Uh, you know, if you have money, you should share it or at least put it to good use to relieve the anxiety of the people in your life, right? So, so you know, all good. You know, I lent him the money, all good. And he went away and paid off his debt and everything's copacetic. And then, you know, six months rolls around and um, I get a call from him. And the call is that he's just going to need a couple of more months, okay, to, to put together the money that he owes me. Okay, fine. You know, and I'm thinking, you know, maybe it's going to be another six months. And at that time, I didn't really care because at that time, I was up to the gills with just work. I mean, I had a big project that I was doing and it was just like all kinds of, of things were distracting me. So, you know, one less thing, basically. And also, I would put out the 20 grand. Okay, so it wasn't in my checking account anymore and I hadn't really needed it at the time or later And so, you know, it, it didn't really matter. I'll get the money when I get the money and I told him fine You know, you need a couple of months fine get me the money in a couple of months And of course two months pass three months pass and uh, I get a call from him <laughs> He's gonna need a little more time Okay, a year has passed since I lent him the money, you know, and I'm not seeing any of it back, right? And I start getting a little pissed off. And also, especially because I start to notice that when we have these family get togethers, he's never around, you know, he's never around for the family get togethers, right? The fucker's avoiding me. Of course he's avoiding me. What the fuck you think, right? 
he's avoiding me and I'm getting pissed off, right? But I'm not making a to-do about it because I figure, you know, again, he's not going to fucking go anywhere. He's not going to fucking vanish. I know where his mother lives. You know, worst case scenario, I can just go to his mom and just say, you know, look what Peter's doing. You know, I, I gave him money and he's cheating me. And, you know, I figure something like that could happen, you know. We get to a year and a half since the fucking loan, right? And I call him up and I say, look, buddy, hey, when is, am I going to get my fucking money? Okay. And by this point, I had to call him. Okay, and that's a very bad sign, right? Because the guy is like figuring, oh, you know, it's so far in the past. You know, he's he's like trying to pretend that you know the 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 money never changed hands, right? That that he just magic that fucking money in his bank account, and uh, me, I don't even fucking exist as far as he was concerned, right? So he was actually surprised when I call him a year and a half after I lent him the fucking money, which he still hasn't fucking returned, right? I'm so pissed. So he's clearly realizing that he's pushed his luck insofar as I'm concerned, and he clearly does not have the goddamn money. So he tells me this. He says, look, what if I do this? What if I pay you 200 bucks a month as interest until I get the money? Oh, God, you know, I'm thinking to myself, you know, $200, what the hell am I going to do with $200 a month, right? Uh, you know, what am I going to do? You know, I don't want the fucking 200 bucks a month, which is, you know, a, a, a couple of restaurant uh, evenings at a restaurant with some nice girl, and that's pretty much it. What, what am I going to do? But I'm like, fine, okay, fine. 200 bucks a month, fine. Every first of the month, you deposit 200 bucks. Okay, fine. Okay, but pay me. When are you going to pay me? And he says six months. <laughs> so we start in this new regime, right? It's uh, 18 months after I lent him the money. He starts paying me 200 bucks every month, right? And sometimes, you know, he sort of like forgets and I have to text him. Uh, when am I going to get the $200? And by this time, I'm pissed. By this time, I'm like thinking, you know, Jesus Christ, man, I wanted to help the guy out. He had an emergency. I helped him out, but come on, right? And now he's like late with the money that he promised me with these interest payments that he, he suggested, not me. He came up with this idea and he's fucking late. What, what the fuck, right? Anyway, so, you know, every once in a while he's late and every once in a while I'm having to like text him and every once in a while out of the blue, I'm sending, sending him texts saying, when are you going to pay me back? When are you going to pay me back? You know, I'm getting fucking pissed, right? And this goes on and it goes another fucking year and a half. I'm not kidding. It's been three years since I lent him the money, right? And all of a sudden I have needs of my own. I have money needs of my own. I, I could use those 20 grand. So I start like hammering at it. I, I want my money. When are you going to give me the money that you owe me? Right? And, and he says, oh, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll try to put something together. And so over the next, I don't know, it must have been, what year was this? Like 2007, 2006, like in dribs and drabs, he starts paying me, you know, uh, a couple of thousand here, a couple of thousand there, all together. It added up to like eight grand over a period of as many months, you know, about eight months, he paid me back eight grand. And, and he's saying, well, you know, now that I'm paying you back, it should be reduced the interest. I'm like, no, no. You pay me the fucking 200 bucks a month until you pay me all the fucking money. Because that was your condition that you put, that you would pay me 200 bucks a month and, and until I, you had paid up all the money that you owed me. So fucking A, you live up to your uh, agreement, right? Okay, so he does it, okay, and he keeps on paying me, and then he just like disappears for a while. And you know, the months start passing, and I get, you know, into other shit, you know. I get uh, distracted by just life and I just put this on the back burner and you know, every more or less every first of the month there's a deposit there. A couple of months, uh, he skips out and I don't notice because you know, I'm not paying that close attention to the fucking thing because I've got other things going for me, right? And finally, you know, uh, one month, you know, I noticed that there's no deposit, but this has happened before. And so I'm like, okay, I'm gonna text him and I text him, okay? And, and no response and no deposit either. And then the next month I text him again, well, where's the 200 that you said that you were gonna pay me, you know, your interest, right? And uh, no response, it went like three fucking months, right? And, and by the way, during all this time, every family get together of the extended family and shit like that, either he's avoiding me, right? 
or he's making sure that he's with people such that I can't bring up the topic, right? You know, with with his own mother, for instance, or with my grandmother. You know, what am I going to say? You know, right in front of my grandmother, I'm going to say to this guy, hey, when are you going to pay me the fucking money you owe me? Of course, I'm not going to say that, okay? So the guy is, is taking advantage of my goodwill, taking advantage of the social niceties in order to not pay, right? And, and finally, after three months, four months of him not paying the interest that he himself told me that he would pay, uh, I call him up. I say, what the fuck is the matter? And it wasn't just the one call, okay? It was like multiple calls in order to finally get him because whenever I called him, he was always busy, he was always this, or he just didn't pick up, right? Finally, I pinned the guy down. And you know what he says? He says, well, yeah, I owed you 12000 but I was paying you $200 uh, a month. And it's been, you know, 60 months, five fucking years, okay? And, uh, you know, so now I don't owe you anything anymore. And I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? I mean, I was fucking blown away. I was blown away that the guy had the chutzpah to just, you know, blow off the money that he owed me. He owed me 12 grand. Shit, the guy, when he had come to me, he had said that it would only be six months. And all of a sudden, you know, one of those weird things that you just don't realize how time flies. And I added up the time. And you know how long it had been? It had nearly been seven years since I'd lent him the money. And I still hadn't seen all of it. And now he was blowing it off. He's saying, well, I paid you uh, 200 bucks over a five year period. And uh, 200 times 60 months, which is how many months there are in five years, that's $12,000, the money you say that I owe you, but I paid it, so I don't owe you this money. And I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? You owe me this money. I lent it to you in good faith. And there's something else that came up. The other thing that had come up was that, see, this guy had said that he needed the cash in order to make sure that his mom didn't lose her apartment, right? And the thing is, see, I don't really pay attention to other people's money situation. I mean, how wealthy or not wealthy they happen to be. But it later turned out, and I discovered this by sheer chance, that see, my aunt, his mother, Peter's mother, had this seaside house that she'd sold for a couple of hundred thousand dollars. And with that money, with a couple of hundred thousand cash, and the sale of the apartment she was currently living in, the apartment that I had saved with this spot loan of 20 grand, they'd gone and bought like a bigger apartment, right? And, and this fucking Peter is fucking living there, right? He had had the cash to pay me months ago. Actually, it was more than a year before. Because, you know, I didn't really know and I hadn't really paid attention. Anyway, uh, you know, I, I, I think about this thing. This shit happened, I don't know, now, what was this, seven, eight years ago maybe, right? It still pisses me off. Anyway, you know, the guy, is, he's adamant he's not going to fucking pay me. He, he's just not going to, okay? Uh, I had to get my mother involved. You know, she wrote a letter, I wrote a letter, an open letter to family, you know, like, what the fuck? Where's the money? Come on. I mean, this was in good faith and it was a private thing. Just him and me. I, I made it a point to keep it quiet. I told him, look, I don't want to embarrass you or anything like this. When I'd made the loan back in 2003, and <laughs> here we are in 2010, right? And the guy's playing wise with me. Right, so it becomes like a big scandal and everybody's upset. And they're upset at me. They're upset at me for wanting my money back, right? So anyway, I go and talk to a lawyer friend of mine, a pretty sharp customer. Uh, this guy, okay, he had gone to the equivalent of Harvard Law School, okay? Uh, and he was working at a bluest of the blue chip firms. He was a, a couple of years older than me, uh, about three, four years older than me. Um, you know, bluest of the blue chip, you know, like Wilmer Hale or, or Skadden Arps, you know, a firm like that category, but like in Chile, right? And he's sharp as a tack and just on the money. And, and I tell him the story, right? Furious, right? I tell him the story and he tells me, well, two things. Number one, you were a fucking idiot to have lent the money. And I'm like, yes, I know, I know. And number two, legally, there is no way for you to get the money back. Because in Chile, uh, verbal contracts aren't worth anything, okay? Uh, only written contracts are upheld by courts. And so just a verbal understanding, it doesn't matter if there are like receipts and deposit slips and all the rest of it, it's, it doesn't matter, okay? There had to have been a contract, a written contract. And so legally, this guy was telling me, there's absolutely nothing that you can do, legally, okay? 
And he kept saying that word, legally, okay? Legally, 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 there's nothing you can do. And, and finally, I get the hint, and I'm saying, well, is there something you can do extra legally? You know? Now, this is the interesting part of the story uh, from, uh, from, uh, from a uh, life experience perspective, okay? Now, you gotta keep in mind, I have never associated with any criminal activity. I have never been arrested for anything ever. Um, the, the, my biggest infraction was an illegal U-turn in Los Angeles in 1996. And, um, and in 2001, I got a ticket in New York City for walking the dog without a leash. That's basically the, my, my law-breaking experience, okay? I, well, you know, buying dope when I was a teenager, I figured that doesn't count, right? But I only bought dope, I never dealt, okay? So, I am not a criminal. <laughs> I don't know anything about, you know, any kind of shady shit, because I just don't. It's just not how I was brought up. I don't know anything, right? And this lawyer, this very sharp guy, this guy who went to, like I said, the equivalent of Harvard and stuff like that, he's known me for a long time, right? Uh, you know, over a decade, right? And he looks at me and he says, look, you really want this money back? And I'm like, fucking A, I do. I want my 12 grand back. He owes me that, right? Okay, he says, I know the name of a guy and I can put in the word for you and I'll give you his number and his name and he'll buy your debt from you. And I'm like, uh, what the fuck are you talking about? Why would some random guy buy my debt from me? What the fuck does that even mean? And, you know, he just looks at me like I'm a fucking babe in the woods because I fucking am, you know. And he tells me, look, this guy will pay you 12 grand for this loan. And he'll take it off your hands and he will deal with Peter. Capiche? And I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? How do you know this guy? And he tells me, who cares how I know this guy? I know this guy. And I can give him the word that this is on the up and up and that this is a real thing because I know you, he said to me. So I will tell him and he will straighten out Peter. <laughs> I'm like uh, laughing and I couldn't quite believe it. Okay, I thought that he was fucking around with me. And I finally said, look, look are we talking for real here? And he's like, fucking hey, we're talking for real. We're talking deadly for real. And I asked him, well, what will happen with Peter? And this lawyer friend of mine said, well, this guy will call up Peter and he'll tell him that he is now the owner of the debt and that it is no longer 12,000. He'll just mark it up to 18 and that he has you know, a month to pay it. And if he doesn't, well, there'll be consequences. Now, I'm really shocked by this. I mean, I, you have no idea how blown the fuck away I was by this. I mean, it was just... Now, this lawyer, I have to emphasize this, and this is important. This guy was used to doing uh, high-level corporate work. I mean, the, the guy, he moved in a very elevated uh, uh, niche. And he still does, as a matter of fact. He's a, he's a partner at this very, very prestigious law firm. And the guy is like squeaky clean, right? I mean, as, as clean as they come, right? Uh, all his business is just buying and selling companies, you know, uh, doing due diligence, shit like that. He supervises a whole boatload of lawyers, right? I mean, he no longer actually has to do the, the legal paperwork shit. He has people to do it for him. He's the guy that they bring in. He's the name. And I'm like, how the hell do you know this? And he tells me something that really blew my mind. He said that, see, when you're a lawyer, when you get to a certain level, okay, you pretty much know everything that's going on. And no matter how high and mighty somebody might be, they always need people who can do a little bit of dirty work. Well, that's a true fucking story. And that's what he said to me. I said to him I was going to think about it, and right after that I called up Peter, and uh, I basically said to him, look Peter, you're going to pay me up or I'm going to sell the loan. And Peter, a lot smarter than me, caught the drift right away. 
he caught the drift right away and he said to me, are you threatening me? I said, I'm not threatening you. I'm telling you what I'm going to do. I am going to sell this loan. So pay me now. This conversation happened like on a Monday or Tuesday or perhaps even a Wednesday. But the point is, see, by Friday, that Friday, Peter had paid the whole thing off in full. Just one deposit like that. And it was done. And that's a true story. That's the true story of the one loan I ever made. The one loan I ever made that was for like, you know, real money. Okay. It is... It was an eye-opening story. Um, Peter later said to everybody that I threatened him with, you know, like something awful happening to him with like gangsters and shit. And I said, no, I never did, which was true. I never did. I said I'd sell the loan. Okay. Uh, technicality, but okay, fine. Whatever the fuck. Right. And uh, my mother asked me about it. Is this true? And I'm like, no, he's crazy. Blah, blah, blah. But I, of course, lied to my mother. It wasn't going to be the first time I'd lied to my mother. You know, of course not. We always lie to our mother. We always tell her the things that are not true because we want to protect her from the reality of the world. And a lot of times we grow up thinking naively that the world is a lot straighter edged than it actually is. But the fact of the matter is, is it's not. Okay, this lawyer that I thought was straight edge as all can be, right? Mm -mm. He knew the guy. He knew the guy personally. He could make the call, just the one call to the guy, and uh, he'd uh, straighten out this situation for me, right? The mere threat that I was going to do this made Peter pay up, okay? That's a true story. And I'm not talking, the, 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 these aren't sordid people here, okay? And, and that's a lesson that I learned. You see that. See, highfalutin people, uh, you know, the high and mighty, you know, they pretend that they're all very respectable. They pretend that they're, you know, squeaky clean. The fact of that matter is it's just a phone call away to get in touch with the most sordid people imaginable who will do their dirty work. Okay. So lesson number one, okay, uh, or, or, you know, a corollary to this know that those people who are squeaky clean, who are highfalutin, who claim that they are, you know, above anything or everything, oh, it's all lies, all lies. A phone call away to, to get in touch with the most sordid people imaginable, okay? Okay, so leaving that lesson aside, the lesson about loans, don't lend anybody any money. Don't, because you're never gonna see that money back or it's going to ruin a relationship because with Peter and his whole family, Ah, the whole thing went tits up. Ah, we never spoke again. It was a big family scandal. The whole thing blew up and everybody hated every, everybody else. And it was just kaflui. That whole relationship, not just with Peter, but his brothers and sisters and the aunt and the whole thing, it went right out the window. Okay. I mean, it was just gone, kaput, you know, ruined forever. It got to the point when my aunt was dying, right? She was dying and she specifically did not want me or my mother to show up at her funeral. That's how bad the whole fucking thing got, okay? Sad, but true. Anyway, if you're gonna loan money to somebody, okay, this is what you do. First of all, you say no. You don't fucking loan anybody any fucking money, ever, period. If you're dumb enough to lend them money, then assume that you're never gonna see it again. Just assume that, you know, just write it off. If you're gonna lend some money to somebody, just assume that that person will not pay you back. And if they happen to pay you back, take it as a like, ooh, like a, like a, like a lovely thing, like, ooh, like a surprise. Like, oh, look, uh, uh, I got a present of the money I'd lent. It came back. Thank you, karma. You know, and take it in those terms because you're not going to see it back because they're going to come up with excuses and bullshit and all the rest of it. So the only reason you should ever lend money is uh, if you expect it never to come back and never ever ever lend it to somebody who is not having an emergency okay because like for instance i started off the story with uh me declining to lend money to some people whom i know right now what did these people want the money for well they wanted to buy a house right i mean they had money to buy the house but not enough and and they were lacking you know five figures and so the obvious question is, why do they need a loan from me? See, because they could do either one of two things. They could either wait around and get the money together that they, met, that they lacked in order to buy the house, or they could buy a smaller house. They didn't actually need my money, my loan. 
Okay, it's not like it was an emergency, right? Okay, so uh, first thing, if you're gonna lend money, uh, which I, I suggest you don't, well, if you're gonna do it, make sure it's an emergency, not just because, or not for, for reasons that are not uh, 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 urgent, right? Number one. And number two, be willing to never see that money again. Just assume that you're never going to see it again. <sighs> man, whenever I think about this goddamn story with Peter, man, I get fucking furious. Yeah? It just got me so angry. It gets me angry now, years after the fact. And at the time, you have no fucking idea how angry I was, right? Because it was like I was being cheated. Well, I was being cheated. I was being cheated. The guy was playing me for a fool, okay? And he was playing on my weakness, okay? That's a mistake that a lot of people make. You know, they're, they're kind, and so other people take their kindness for weakness. This story does not have a happy ending, okay? Like I said before, everybody got pissed off with everybody else. You know, uh, relationships, familial relationships were ruined forever. It was a big fucking disaster, okay? All because of money. Don't ever, ever lend money, period, okay, unless there's collateral.